Hey there. Lately when I went to go charge my biggest 48 volt 20 amp battery, I found that I had a little bit of a problem. After plugging it in and getting it a charge and I had the meter on it. You see when it finishes up to charge it, it stops, but then it quickly sags down to, uh, it's about 0.25 volts off from what it should be there. So that tells me that one of the columns in the battery is out of balance, which I think I'm just gonna in, end up replacing the BMS while I'm at it to fix that. But for the moment, I'm gonna cut it open, go ahead and test each one of the rows, see how many volts I'm pushing out and see which one's off balance. And then I'm gonna hook another BMS up to her and see if it's able to balance this out better than the current one. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the battery open. Okay, now that I got the battery all the way opened up, I can go ahead and with my multimeter, put the positive and negative on each one of the columns and be able to test it. You can see here what I mean by each one of the columns. And there's 13 of these columns. That's what makes it a 13S. All right, you turn the multimeter on and turn it to that setting there. And we're gonna go ahead and you just put the probes one on that side. And then on the other side of the battery, you put the other probe. And now you can read the voltage from there, which I'm reading 4.18 on that. I've already tested all these. I went down through each one of the columns and tested it. I pretty much found that they're not too far off from each other. The balancing doesn't seem to be the issue. I'm really not too sure why the BMS has the early cutoff on it. Uh, because what I found, they're all... They're all relatively real close to each other here. Hope this last one, so it's probably the lowest, uh, just off by uh, three hundredths there. So I didn't end up finding uh, one of the columns was off by a tenth. Still doesn't explain the deficit of energy. So I decided to replace the BMS to get rid of this nonsense. BMS here, it's um, a little bit thicker. It should fit in my pack still. I may have a bulge on one side, not a big deal. Hey, that's what she said. And then I went with the one that has the discharge and charge all on one side. This should help out because a lot of times I do charge through the discharge. So this will balance it out, make it a little bit safer. Hopefully this will give me the ability to get up to 54.6 after charging and not not down here at F54 where I'm at. Unfortunately with this one, it doesn't look like they use the same harness. So I'm gonna also go ahead and have to connect this harness into the system. First to get at the wires a little bit better, it looks like I'm gonna have to tear off this foam here. First, let me confirm that this harness, there's no way that it'll actually fit. Nope, they used a totally different system on that. That was, that was nice of them. Oh, the joy, so yeah, I gotta solder this harness into there. So I'm gonna tear into here a bit and get to the wires a little bit better. A lot of times when these batteries, things start going weird with them, it isn't actually the battery. It's a lot of times a BMS. I have swapped them out before. Uh, this will be my second battery trying to repair. No, I did this one before too at one point. Yeah, this one's, this BMS has been replaced before too. It's it's already fried for, um, I, think it, I think it's only like a year old. So yeah, I fried it pretty quick. I don't, I don't think it likes charging through the discharge port. So it's pretty basic here. We got our negative, we got our positive, and we got all our balance leads. The way it pretty much goes is this goes here on the negative. The next one would go onto this side. The next one would go onto this side. This side, this side, this side, this side, and so on, all the way up to the battery. The easiest way for me to do it, and I mess things up right now, is just, I'm pretty much just gonna reverse engineer the battery since I'm just doing a repair on it. So first thing I need to do is remove the battery negative cable going to the BMS. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my soldering iron and heat it up to full heat. This connection here, uh, it's solid, but definitely isn't pretty. I mean, I've been falling in love with uh, these things here. They're little uh, heat shrink solder things. It's kind of all in one, you hit it with the heat gun. I'm gonna get, try to use one of these on it, make it look a lot cleaner than this nasty looking connection here. Okay, yeah, so it looks like, looks like I'm gonna need 
just about the same amount of length on that cable as before. So I'm going to unsolder this and try to recover as much as I could. I was hoping I could have cut it out, but okay, whatever, that works. So I got the balance wires disconnect there. So now we're just going to heat this sucker up and remove it. Okay, now that I got that removed, pretty much the only thing holding it on now are the charge wires. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those two connections to the charge wire and the VMS will be completely removed then. And I have the VMS extracted now from the thing. <laughs> Given the condition of that wire, I think I'm going to cut off the end anyways. It's real, got too much solder on the end there. Okay, so now i got to just hook up this B negative wire to the battery's negative here. Temperature monitor, we're just gonna have down into the middle of the battery. I'm gonna end up taping it in there just to keep an eye on the temperature, charging temperature, and just charging temperature. Okay, and now I'm gonna hook the B side up to the negative of the battery. Pretty much I'm gonna use these heat shriek uh, solder things. Pretty easy, I just hit it with the heat gun. It seals everything up there, makes it all watertight, and it won't come apart. It's a good connection. Saves a lot of time. Costs a little bit more than solder and heat shrink, but well worth it in my opinion. Pretty much to do it, you just twist the two ends of the wire together, you push it together, and then you use the heat gun on them. I'm just broken. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. And that's how you disconnect all your wires instantly. <laughs> okay, and <laughs> well, I guess that's how I learned these lessons. So uh, you guys don't have to um, keep the uh, heat gun far away from the balance leads. Yeah, they got quite fragile uh, plastic on them. So yeah, <laughs> that was a little scary. It was a hell of scary, actually. We're gonna do it this way this time. All right, that looks like a pretty good connection there. Oh, it's already kind of started removing the wires for me. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get those clipped off, uh, get the new one in place and everything. Okay, in some cases like this one, it may, may actually be better to use the lighter because, well, <laughs> I don't think I need to replay that again. So I'm going to go ahead and put one of those over here on this one. However, this time I'm going to use the lighter method. Because I'm really close to everything in here. And Yep. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and use the lighter method here. Trying not to hopefully burn the casing next to it. Go ahead and grab the second wire. Right next to the one that I just connected. And then that one. I'm going to put to the proper length there. Trim about there, and strip off the wires, and then I'm gonna solder it to a little pad there. Fortunately, this battery does not have the tabs that come around. So I got the old bits out. Now I should just be able to solder this right into place pretty pretty quickly, I would assume. But I hope you definitely don't want to sit here and apply too much heat in one spot for too long. Okay, and wire two is connected. So now the next one should be wire three here will now go on the flip side of here onto this back side. So I gotta go ahead and flip it over now. So on same thing on this side, I'm gonna heat the pad, remove the old wire, and then attach the new wire to it. And pretty much it goes the same way as this, back and forth, back and forth, all the way till we get to the positive wire. Okay, got them all soldered up. Just need to do the heat shrink over here. Okay, and of course, yeah, I'm gonna use my lighter on this one. I'm gonna just kind of manually confirm them before I plug this in and yep. So I'm gonna go back and trace all the wires, make sure they're all right now. Okay, and now that I confirmed all the connections there, I need to go ahead and clean up my wiring on this side and eventually hook up the uh, negative to the actual output of the negative. So first of all, I can go ahead and remove the whole entire charge positive here. 
I got the charge positive removed. I'll adjust the end on my uh, charger. I already have another one that has the uh, XT60 on it. So I got the positive removed. I just don't want to leave it open like that. So <clears throat> you shrink this end on here real quick. Here we go, and that should keep that pretty sealed up. Oh, it worked as a wire cap too. Better than trying to go back into the tabbing here and uh, un unsolder it from there. I'd just rather cap it off. Yeah, it's watertight, sealed on there. It's good. So the next thing I have to do is connect these two leads together. So I'm going to take one of my oops, heat shrink tube things there, put it there. Put the other one over here. Kind of twist tie these guys together. And I'm going to use a wider to heat up this one because, yeah, I don't want to use the heat gun that close to the battery again. All right, now the moment of truth. Pretty much going to plug in the BMS and hopefully nothing goes boom. <laughs> Shit. All right. I was a little worried at first when I first plugged it in. I wasn't getting any kind of reading off of it, but there we go. So my next step is to see basically if I fix the problem before I clean any of this up and make it look better. So I'm going to go get my other charger that can plug into this end and charge her up real quick to see how she goes. All right. It's in at 54.15 now. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the charger in here. And it says we're charging at 50, 54.42 at the moment. So I'm going to let that charge for a while. Okay, a little bit better than the uh, other BMS. This one got it up to 54 point, well, was it 5? It looks like it's trying to adjust now. So I'm going to give it a while, see if it's able to balance out that uh, 8 cell. It's still a little bit low. Let me, let me check to see what it's at right now, actually. It's at 408 and the others are all at 418. So yeah, it's a one tenth off. That's definitely where my uh, loss of potential is at is in this eight cell. So I'm hoping this is going to be able to balance it out a little bit better. I think balancing would mean discharging for one and charging the other, but I don't know. We'll see. Give it time. All right. Now I'm going to use a old trick I like to use. I got the alligator clips hooked up to that low cell, which is the eighth one. And then I got it hooked up to 18650 battery charger. Basically, I'm going to plug that in and try to charge that cell up to 4.2. Uh, a hobby charger would work better, but this is what I have on hand. I uh, have a few of these back on the day when I used to vape. So they're also uh, battery chargers for other types. So I'm going to go ahead and try to balance it out, see if I can get it just a little bit closer. Yeah, you can see with it on now. It thinks there's a battery in there, so it has it up to 4.12. Okay, it's a couple days later. I've checked all the cells. Everyone is uh, nominal. It's between uh, 4.14 and 4.18. So everything in there is good. Uh, the total voltage, when I hook it up now, it's in at 64.669. It's going to rise a little bit, probably into the sevens. So that is definitely nominal. I was looking for 54.6. So everything's looking good here. I'm holding all my capacity. Everything's built back up. I got just the one cable for charging and now discharging, which is definitely a lot more safe. I don't have to take it off and check to make sure everything's uh, still nominal on them. You do want to do that if you got the charge and discharge cable and you're charging through the discharge. After a while, yeah, you want to take them off and check them. Or you could just replace the BMS with one of these guys here. So yeah, I'm just going to tape it back up here, put the plastic covers back on, replace the foam here, kind of tape it together, and then she will be good to go. Well, oh, and then I will also then heat shrink it. I'm going to add a little bit of silicone caulk in here at the end, just to keep all the wires real taut and... Uh, Make it somewhat water resistant slash waterproof. There you go. Bob your uncle. <laughs> now I'm just going to put a little bit of silicone around all the seams. Just a little bit just to seal it up just in case any water encroached in there. Just the same kind of theme to kind of make it water resistant. 
And because it just wants to fall around on me like that, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, give it a wrap of this heat tape here. This tape's supposed to be able to withstand pretty high temperatures. So I got to go ahead and repair the top. It was broke when I was getting into the battery. Not a big deal. I'm just going to place it back on there. Same thing, silicone, a little bit of tape. Should be good. Nobody will be able to tell in the end because it'll be all heat shrinked. Okay, that's in no way pretty at this point. But that's not what I'm going for underneath. This is kind of the under skeleton. It's pretty much should be functional and sealed. The silicone, once I heat shrink it all, it'll squeeze it in there. It's still wet. Doesn't matter. It'll dry eventually. So I got my heat shrink out here. Pretty much I just need to measure it to length roughly. Leaving a little bit of excess on the ends. Probably, I don't know, I'm gonna try about an inch this time. Last time I went a little too long. And heat shrink her up. So just gonna take it, eyeball it real quick. All right, now I just need to slide the battery in there. The not so easy part. Okay, now I got the heat gun out, making sure there's nothing that's gonna melt or catch fire anywhere near. So basically I'm gonna wanna use this and kind of just go back and forth slowly. Uh, if you hold in one spot too long, you mess up and you'll burn a hole in it. So yeah, you just turn it on, go back and forth, don't concentrate in one spot too long and just kind of work your way around the battery, doing it to each side. Uh, best to take your time, not to be impatient. Like I said, you know, if you burn a hole in it, you gotta start all over. But like, they usually do sell it in pretty big wraps. All right, nice. And then just around the edge of it, because I don't want water sitting. If I'm getting in there rusting on it as a wrapper, that wouldn't be good either. Just gonna put a little bit of silicone right around the edge of the, the heat shrink. All right, that repair turned out pretty nice. Yeah, I got a little bit of silicone on the outside, but once it dries, it'll roll right off. It's not a big deal. Getting a little bit better at the heat shrink wrapping, I think. And you can see where that one plastic piece is broken, but not a big deal. I got a functioning 20 amp battery again. I definitely I uh, hope everybody found this video useful. I, I would have before I did this. Could have kept me from making that little mistake and almost uh, burning down my house there. But anyways, thanks for watching. Until next time. Take it easy. Check you later. Don't eat any of that yellow snow.